I joined the White House staff in uh, 1961 and stayed there until the end of 63. And at that time, then I went to flight school. I was a, a, a staff sergeant and I flew with Kennedy and with Johnson. I had uh, 25 missions with President Kennedy and 10 with President Johnson. <clears throat> I was qualified in multi-engine helicopters and uh, that I had uh, extensive flight time with the, that as a crew chief. And then I applied for it and uh, was selected. Um, you flew uh, Jackie Kennedy, what was that? Yes, I probably had 50 missions with her. And because um, she would do a lot of uh, traveling from the White House to their Virginia uh, location with the, with the children. And then we would, uh, when they were in, the, in their location off, um, off White House grounds, <clears throat> we would be on a standby at uh, Camp David. And we would uh, be re ready to alert in case there was any problems or we could evacuate them. Oh, that's when she lost that baby way back when, her last and her third child. I happened to be at, uh, it was Otis Air Force Base and it was a Sunday and we were working on the aircraft, uh, some last minute things that we had to do for it. We had a, and uh, all of a sudden they came running down and said, let's get the aircraft in the air. And two pilots came running out and I was the only crew member there. I took it out of the hangar. They cranked it uh, while it was still, I was jumped on board and away we went and picked her up and flew her at uh, maximum speed all the way on the aircraft. And it was she and her doctor and took her to the Air Force Base. When uh, Kennedy did the uh, tour of, of Europe, mainly Ireland, uh, we were the crew that uh, uh, f supported that and flew all over Ireland. He happened to be in my aircraft at that time. Because the crew members, we consisted of two pilots and a, crew ch and a flight engineer and a crew chief. And they were assigned to that aircraft, except the pilots floated around, but the crew members that was our aircraft, our tail number, and we stayed with it the whole time. And we had our own military police that traveled with us. It was very interesting. President Kennedy was, was uh, very friendly, and uh, he didn't know, he recognized faces because there was only four crews that flew in most of the time. And uh, we, were, we didn't know which aircraft was gonna take him until just before the flight for security reasons. We had our own military police, like I mentioned, and they're the only ones that could get near the aircraft. So it was high security every place we went. What kind of credentials did you have? Top secret, yeah. Everybody uh, who flew in the, White, in the White House staff had top secret clearance. And in addition to top secret, then we had White House clearance too. Was there a difference in their demeanor or your demands between Kennedy and Johnson. Is this on the record? <laughs> yes, there was. And uh, President Kennedy and family were quite gracious and very, you got chills when you saw them, especially President Kennedy, because he was, he was the president and you know it. And then Johnson? He was, uh, a Texas boy, <laughs> bad man. <laughs> How did the security change after the assassination? Uh, it kept the same because it was top notch all the time. It was maximum security of it, everything. Where were you when you heard? I was at home waiting for uh, to pick him up. We were on standby duty for when President Kennedy was coming back. It was our aircraft and crew that was going to pick him up at, at uh, the air base and fly him to the White House. And they told us that and uh, I was devastated. And then we went on red alert. We were ready at a moment's notice to, um, to be ready to pick up. Actually, then we picked up uh, President Johnson when he flew in. Uh, from the presidential flight, I went to flight school and became a warrant officer and then went immediately to Vietnam. Spent a year there, and when I was in, in Vietnam that time, I was uh, nominated for uh, to, to be promoted directly to a, uh, a second lieutenant. And then I, when I came back 
from uh, after, shortly after I got back in the States. I was an instructor pilot and then awarded second lieutenant. And then went from second lieutenant to uh, major. Demanding, was this demanding? Yes, oh yeah. Because we, could, we were on call 24 seven. Uh, we could be called and no telling where you were gonna go. So we, we were on ready, but generally, you were notified if there was something coming up, they'd let you know ahead of time, as much as they could. Out of all your certificates that you have here and awards, any one mean more to you than another? I would say the service in Vietnam, which was 42 air medals and the Taurus and the Bronze Star. Why that one? Well, it was uh, awarded for a combat venture and uh, it was a hairy one. We had uh, over 125 bullet holes in our aircraft when we landed. It was a Huey at that time. Second tour, I flew the Cobra. We were one of the first ones in Vietnam flying the Cobra. And when I landed second tour at Tan Sanut, it was under siege. And they threw our baggage off. It was a TWA air, uh, uh, flight. Everybody jumped off dumped all the baggage and they took off because they were bombing the, uh, they were mortaring the airway, the airport. And I, I'm going, what happened to that friendly little war? I left because <laughs> it was just cranking up and, and then. What uh, type of uh, welcome home did you receive at that time? Uh, not a warm one because that was when the, uh, there was a lot of demonstrations against Vietnam and we were uh, directed, uh, do not leave the airport with your uniform. So as soon as we got to the airport, we, we uh, took our uniform off and had civilian clothes that we put on to travel. How did that make you feel? Uh, not very happy. <laughs> <laughs>